to begin making our animated sprites that we will then be able to move around the screen using the keyboard controls, we have to look at how we can do that. And one of the tools that we're going to be using is Pascal, which is a free app. It has both an online version, so you can do it directly in your browser, or you can download it to your computer and work on it locally. Now, we're going to look at downloading an existing uh, sprite sheet, but also how to use Piskel and create your own sprites from scratch. Some good resources for finding open source game art that you can use would be a website like Kenny. There's lots of assets here. So when we go into the assets, we can go and choose what kind of assets we want, 2D or 3D assets, characters, etc. So if you want to download everything in one fell swoop, then you support it, either purchase it or become a um, donator on Patreon to uh, help it out. Open Game Art is another great resource where you can find sprites. So for today's demonstration, I am going to be using the skeleton sprite sheet and we will be able to break it into individual pieces like that. So when we download it, it looks like this. So then we can find that I get the sprite sheet that has the different images, the different views that we need all in one single graphic. And for the code that we're going to be working with, we want to separate those into individual image files so that when we're done, we have all of the individual image files, all 12 frames. So we have three images for each direction that the skeleton is walking. So that is what we're going to look at is how we can start with the sprite sheet and break it into individual PNG files that we can work with. Now you could build individual frames or layers of artwork for your animation using any graphics editor from Photoshop or even Illustrator. So there's lots of ways that you can go about creating your artwork. I'm just going to show you a tool that is both free and really good for making animated sprites. So after downloading and installing Pistol and opening it up, this is what you are presented with. And if I want to get the frames of animation to work with, I can look on the control menu on the side and find import. And then I'm going to browse for an image that I'm going to bring in. Now, with this, I'm going to just bring in the standard skeleton as part of this. So you can see it has walking away from you or up. So if we were playing a top-down RPG style game, this would be for up movement, right, down, left, north, east, south, west. So I will bring that in. And now during the import, it's asking me, is this a single image or is this a sprite sheet that we can find those individual frames? And I'm going to say we can find those individual frames. And if I go back, I will see it's 48 by 64 for the size of the frame. So if I type in 48, we'll see how it divides it. And then I can type in 64 and we can see how it perfectly is going to understand those frames. Now when I click import, I'll say, yeah, I'm replacing it. Well, there's nothing there, so we're good. Okay, and now we can see right here, it's walking. And we can see the individual frames of the animation that we have. So we, if we wanted to modify this, add to it, or do anything else, we certainly could. So if I go on to this frame here, if I were to say, I'm just going to choose a red color and decide that the skeleton in this view here is going to have red and those, I can choose a different brush size. So I can choose a two by two brush to make it quicker to fill. And I just go through each one of those frames and now I'll see he has a red eye when he's in that direction and we'll add well, mist, red and red. Move to the next frame. Now I can cycle through my frames. And when I'm using the two by two brush, 
the gray overlay is really hard to see when I'm doing it on what is essentially a grayscale image. But I can use the arrow keys to navigate through my frames very quickly. So this allows me to, so we can see he has red eyes and is walking. So this is going to give us animation. Now one thing we're going to find is when we bring this into code and speed this up, it is going to become, you know, so when it's running at high speed, we can see that, you know, he's, he's really motoring there. So when our sprites, if they're animating or moving across the screen, if we want it to be a more manageable amount, we may need to modify this. And we, we'll come back to that. We'll look at how we might be able to do some things with code to slow it down. But also, if we create additional frames of artwork, animation is simply change over time. This is giving us a representation of 12 frames per second, but we know that processing will be running our sketch at 60 frames per second, which is important if we want smooth movement or motion on the screen. So we may need to then modify what we do or add additional frames to the animation. So we could certainly double the number of frames and that would slow it down dramatically and probably give us smoother animation. And if I go onto a frame with my cursor and put the mouse over the corner, it says duplicate this frame. So if I were to duplicate every frame here, effectively doubling the graphics, then that would allow it to play a little bit slower. So that would be one way that we could accomplish that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at my 12 images that we have and if I want to export these images, I can click on export. Now we'll see that there's a couple of different options for export. So I can export as an animated GIF, I can export it as PNG, and it says it will export as a PNG sprite sheet containing all frames. I can export as a zip, and then that will contain one PNG for each frame of my animation. And now file names will start with, and this is where I can type in what I want it to be for my name and I'm just going to call mine skeleton red eye. Now it's possible that we would want our layers to be split. Now we don't have any layers here and we'll look at that in the next example how we can work with layers. That we would want the layers to be split into individual graphics so that we could then control them independently through code. That might be something in a more advanced project you would want to do, but for right now we don't need to do that. I'll click download zip and I can decide where it's going to save. So I've made a folder called sprite demo. I'm going to put it into that folder and I can leave this name as is. Now inside this demo we will save it here. Eventually we'll put it into our assets folder once we have our code sketch available and ready to work. So hit save, exports it out, and navigating to that folder, I can double click on it, it expands it, and let's see what we got. So now we have each one of our frames of the animation as a separate PNG file ready to animate with our programming code. Now if you're going to begin your sprite directly in Pascal, there's any number of ways you can do it. I like to take advantage of the fact that I can use layers to both speed up and simplify my animation process. So starting out, I'm going to work on my beginning base color that I want to use. And I'm going to use this color to start sketching in my artwork because what I want to figure out is I want to get my artwork on and have it occupy uh, most of the drawing surface. So once I do this then I can use this one master layer and start breaking it into pieces. So as I'm going to be working on my 
unicorn artwork here and I'm not too worried you know it's like I have extra pixels and need to clean things up as I go I'm gonna pull this down a little bit I know that I'm gonna pull the main out a little bit when I actually animate it so this now gives me a starting shape that I want to work with and now that I have that I'm going to start cleaning it up with the eraser and generally I find when I'm doing things like you know stuff that will be either for the legs or for the body almost need to have it three pixels wide because when it's set at three pixels wide I can hollow out the inside. Now I'll trim off the front I don't want that there and now creating pixel art is I, is really that. It's an art. It's something that some people are really gifted and skilled at creating and some of us are not as good at it so we may not be as happy with the end results that we get. But a lot of it is through trial and error and practice as you start to figure out how you want to create your artwork for your project. Now if you use keyboard shortcuts, so I'm using P for the pen tool and using E for the eraser, then that allows me to clean up my drawing and yeah, we're getting pretty close here for how it's going to be. Now coloring in for my unicorn horn looks like we'll have to do some adjustments on that as well as we figure out exactly what that color is going to look like but I, I think right now well, I thought it was back to the eraser I'm pretty happy with this as starting shape now I need to clean up on the leg and the rear end here a little bit as I'm trying to imagine when I start filling it with color how is that going to look and one thing that I do want to do and what I found is makes things easier is if I plan out and create all the outline so I've sketched it in loosely I'm still on one layer now I can use my paint bucket tool in a moment here so I'm going to find a new color that I want to work with and I will choose that as my fill color I can grab the bucket click and now it fills it in so I can see what I have going over here and decide if that is going to work and in this case I'm going to say yeah we'll make it we'll make it work now a few things I want to change I'm going to change out the tail I'll be changing out the main horn and adding in a few other colors along the way as I start building this up so Clicking back into the color, we can go find another color. I'm going to go for much paler yellow and now start coloring that in on the horn so we can see how that has now colored that in. Want to find an eye color and choose kind of a darker blue, make it big enough so that I can see what's there and let's go find on the tail coloring that in, I, may, I might do both the tail and the um, main I think the same this time so I'm going to start out I'm going to be taking it through kind of a rainbow of color so I'll start out and first go red and we'll add some red on the tail and 
and then move in, grab orange. Follow that by yellow. So I'm giving it a rainbow look. Oh, I forgot forgot to put some orange over here. The tail is going to be smaller, so we might. We're not going to be able to fit all the colors as cleanly on the tail. Green. Throw a couple greens in here. Now, if I want to go back and get a color, I can grab that orange. Go back and grab my pen tool to color in some of the orange for the tail. So we're kind of starting to match that. So green, now we need a blue, so we'll move down and find a blue tone. Blue. And throw a couple blues down here. And move into my indigo. I'm going to lighten that a little bit. I'm trying to keep colors relatively Which can throw that blue there, we'll throw that there, and now go into a violet. And with that, I think we have a good start to our critter here. So I have, yeah, I'm not liking that color that much. We might have to modify that. Choose something a little stronger, darker. Let's try that. Yeah, it's going to be better. I'll just let a few lighter so it's almost like highlights hitting it. And to continue that road, I'm going to click on my eyedropper, choose my pink color. Now that I've chosen the pink, I'm going to go for a lighter version of the pink. Oh. Let's try that again. Then choose the color, go back to the pen. Adding just a little bit of highlight. Add some highlight. So we're starting to just add a little bit of sculpting in on our character. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about making it darker because those are the areas where we'll be doing our cuts for animating. So I have the tail, the head, the legs, the body, and we're set. So with this, if I take this layer, I can click on it, and I'm going to start out and put the legs on the lower level. We'll call that layer legs. The next thing I want to do is to duplicate this layer. Notice if I hold down the shift, it allows me to duplicate it, so hold down shift. And we'll put in the layer for the body and a layer for the head. I could also, if I were going to work it, I could animate the tail a little bit where I could then modify the shape of the tail. But I think we're going to, on this one, just leave it alone. So that layer, the first one, I am going to declare my body. And then on the top one here, I will go and call this my head. Now what I need to do on each one of these layers is start eliminating stuff that's there and easy way to do that is the eraser. 
So I'm gonna switch to the bigger eraser so we can see how that's working. So, well, I didn't want to erase any of the main. So now it gives me this kind of onion skinning where I can see through to the layer below. Now if I go to the body layer, body layer will get rid of where the head was. And on the body layer, we're also going to get rid of the legs because we'll be animating the legs from the leg layer. And now I go to the leg layer. And provided I haven't erased too much, we'll be in good shape. Now, one thing is when we start moving layers around, we will be able to draw onto their pixels as we work with it. So I can see that the whole of it looks pretty good. So we're in good shape. And what I want to do now is I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate this frame. Now we don't see any change yet because, well, it looks the same, but if on this layer, so right here, what we can do is use the hand tool. Now the hand tool, if I read what it says, it says apply to all layers, apply to all frames, wrap canvas around borders. Those are things I don't really want because I want to be moving these individual layers here. So if we take this layer and with the head, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go to the body, use the hand, see how I can move it up, and now we can see how it's starting to animate. Now if I go back to the head, move the head with it, but maybe I want to move, you know, so we can see very quickly how we're starting to animate. Now if I move to this next frame, I duplicated it one more time, and this time I am going to, and notice it's slower because now this frame is repeating. So as I talked about, we could duplicate frames to slow it down. That's in essence what's happening. Now if I take the legs and pull those legs up, we can see how the character is starting to move quite a bit. So the legs are coming up and now if I were to duplicate this frame again, I'm going to move the legs. So now you see how we're starting to get a little bit of motion and go to the head layer. And or do I want it down here? No, I think I like that better. Let's go. So we're down. So frame one is down, frame two we're up, frame three the legs come up and forward. I want to go back to the leg layer and I'm going to pull them up so we get a lot more kind of movement happening with those legs. Now I could put each leg on its own layer so then they would be moving as well but I think this is going to give me what I need for the first four frames. So now I have my sprite animating across four frames and what I can do is I can then duplicate these and I'm looking at the neck. Let's see which frame is that at. Right here, I think on this layer, I want to 
um, pull the neck out. I feel like it's pinching a little bit, so let's oh, grab the purple, grab the pen, let's pull that out, grab some of the pink, grab the pen, there, that's moving a little bit better. Now, I could even across these layers as the head moves, I could even take these pixels of the main and I could wiggle that up and down as well. So there's no limit to the number of things you can move on your given layers. But right now I'm going to say that, you know, this is going to be good enough. So working with this, what we may find is it's easier to do the left and right in one file and then we could create a version of going up and down in a separate file so that we're not dealing with as many kind of layers as part of it. So that, that's a possibility. We can also take and merge all these layers down now that we do have kind of the core of what's happening. That would be another solution. So there's there's never going to be a single way to do things, but there's different methods or strategies of how you may wish to proceed with it when you do something. So I've decided what I'm going to do is merge my layers down. Here we go, merge. This just changes the stacking order of the layers, the up and down arrow, but this icon right here says merge with layer below. So I am going to merge that down, merge that down. So now we have our character animating. Now if I need to or want to make changes to it, I certainly can do that. But we can see how the character is moving right now. To duplicate this, I need to do this one frame at a time. So when I duplicate a frame, that frame appears right after it. So now I'll pull that down to the end. Then I go to frame two, duplicate that, pull that to the end, and then go to frame three, duplicate that, pull that now down to the end and take frame four, and I'm going to duplicate that and pull that down to the end. Now what we can do with these frames, so we know one, two, three, four is my facing right. If I take frame five, if I look here, I have an option to flip it. So I'm going to now flip it, take frame six, flip it, well, I was still on five. Whoops. Now there's six. Flip. Seven. Flip. And finally, oh. Eight. Don't click on the garbage can when you're trying to click on it. Flip. So now we can see I have four frames left, four frames right as it is now animating my unicorn. The next thing that I want to do with this is to add in the movement for going up and the movement for going down. So it's going to be a modified version of what we see here using the same colors, trying to align pieces up together to create that animation. So to create, I'm going to start out with the, re the rear view. So I've now duplicated frame 8. So that gives me a starting point. And one thing that I can do when I'm working is I, if I use, say, the select tool, I can select those pixels and then I can move them by holding down shift. Now I can move that to wherever I want it to be. Let go, click off, and we can see how it moves those pixels over. So I'm going to just move some pixels over here just so I have oh, apparently I missed shift 
There we go. That gives me some colors to work with and that's what I want. So now I have the purple, grab my pen tool, and I'm going to start sketching in my unicorn from behind. Now using the same kind of process that I used before where as I developed it I'm going to roughly work on the volumes and then I'm going to work on cleaning it up after using the eraser tool. Then we can decide how we need everything to look on this rear view. Now we can start getting rid of some, oh, go to a bigger eraser that speeds it up, get rid of some of the things I know I don't need. I'll go back and add in some of the things I do. So this is giving me a decent starting point. And flush that out. There, there. I have to do some more racing around for the horn and the ears, but that gives me decent starting shape. I'll be adding in more colors fixing the mane and the tail, but I now need to add in more into the flesh area, or flesh, the skin areas of the horse. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want where. As we try to uh, build up the artwork. Now, in pixel art, um, oh, I don't really. I was thinking I had the eraser there for a moment. Let's try again and we'll grab this. So in pixel art we don't always, it's not always the most realistic looking and it's really just a matter of figuring out what you want it to look like and how. So we can keep you now sampling some of the colors So as I'm putting some colors in, then I'm going to kind of keep sampling those as we start to flush it out. So we have O for the eyedropper, P for the pen. Adding in some random, so O, go grab some of the orange, P back to the pen. O for the red, P for the pen. Bring some of the orange and yellow up into that. So it's starting to take shape as I work with this. Went some of that purple right there. And the blue. And that blue. And orange. Yellow.
So now I have a rear view and the primary thing that's going to be changing in this view is that will be I'll cut and move the head and I will cut and move the feet a little bit. So if I go back to the beginning we can see we're down, body goes up, feet so the legs stretch, then the legs shrink, and then the moving forward will be two frames of that and that's what we need. So now going back to the end this is more of the in the air and forward so we can duplicate this and duplicate it again but now this one so the first of that rear I'm going to extend those legs down and I can do that by selecting those legs and then hold down shift and pull them down here and then we just need to fill in the gaps. So grab the pen. Grab the pink. And so now I have the first frame is here, then we have that so now and with this we're going to pull actually I can just use the hand for this pull it down so we're down up and then I'm, on this one I'm going to leave it there duplicate it one more time and then pull the legs I'm just going to pull the legs forward on it. So I will cut the legs right here, shift, pull them up one. So we can see how that shift is happening. Down, up, and on this one, let's see, so we're down. Up. I'm going to pull the whole head down, so for this one I'll make a selection. And this is part of that whole trying to build that animation. So for here, down, legs, hold. So that now gives me animating in three directions and we just need to work on artwork for the fourth. So to continue with this animation I'm going to duplicate these frames and then it will become my front view. So I'll duplicate that. I'm going to pull that all the way down to the end. Here this is now going to be the front view of my unicorn. So the nice part about that is I have my pink selected, grab my paintbrush, I can quickly block in a lot and I'm just going to pretend, oh I've got a few empty frames I see there we'll need to fill up. So we'll color those in in a little bit. So O gives me my selector, P, shrink the brush down, gives me my pen tool. And let's go here, O, pen, back to frame there and I'm just trying to figure out how I want uh, the eyes to be Let's just 
just a matter of painting things in until you get your desired outcome. The nice part is the body, we're mostly going to just be able to work with this as is without having to do a lot of extra work to it to switch it over um, So now I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, didn't want that purple there. We'll let the eye be big. Like that. And purple on the outside. Outside. And a little bit more pink. So, you know, I apologize if uh, the drawing part seems like, you know, it's a bit tedious to watch. Um, at times it's a little bit tedious to do. So it doesn't always make for the most um, exciting part in the tutorial. But hopefully we can use this as a nice learning experience. I'm just trying to add some highlights around it and want to add some more for the horn. Add a little bit more purple around it. And I'm just going to use my other dark color on it. And a little bit of shading around. So unicorn's not quite as uh, interesting to look at from this view because it um, doesn't have as much color going on. But I might add in then a little bit more shading elements into it just to break it up a little bit more. But that now gives us the starting front frame. I'm going to duplicate it. Now let's go back and revisit. So we're down and then the body is going to move up, down, body and legs compress. Then the head goes up and then the legs go up one more. So we're here. So the body and legs will need to go up. Because from frame one to frame two. Body and legs go up, the head stays stationary. So click, duplicate it. Now it's going to be a simple select. And I, I, I say that jokingly because as we do this, it's not going to be as simple as that because I need I'm going to have to then pull the jaw section back down so I'm going to select I'm going to try and go one under the nostrils so select hold down shift you can pull the body up so you can see how the body went up but now what I want to do is to select this part then shift pull that back down and then we can just do a little uh, fill in all right so we're here get the body going up there duplicate the frame and now on this one, go back to our select, grab that, and we're going to shift drag it up one more. Let's see, it was let's undo that. So 
here, body goes up, head goes up, oh, and then legs go up. So we're here, body goes up, and now we need to move the head up, and then the legs. So trying to be consistent with the animation. Sure there's no point in selecting all that body, we'll just grab the head here, shift, head goes up, and we can just fill in some gap. So that fills that in. And then our final fourth frame, frame number 16. At this point, I can just select this, hold down shift, move up one frame. So now we have our unicorn and it's moving in all four directions. So once we have achieved this, then what we need to do with this is we need to get it out of here. And I also am noticing I have not saved this yet, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to save this. If I save it as a Piscale file, it will keep my layers, it will keep all of my frames and artwork. So I can uh, save that. It's going to prompt me where do I want to save it. I'm just going to put it into the project folder that we're going to be working on right now. And now when I export it, I want to do it as a zip. And I'll just call it unicorn, download zip. Uh, I'm going to cancel that for a moment. If I notice here, it's going at uh, 1x32. 32 is the default size I have for my project. But I can just scale each one of these pixels up by going 2x and make it 64 like that. And then I will have better sized artwork. So now I can click here and export that as a zip file. So now that I have completed that, I can leave Piscal and go and look at my file that I have and go find this unicorn and inside the unicorn I will find that I have each one of my frames as an individual PNG file so that I'm going to be ready to bring these into processing so I can use them for my animation.